All right, so in class nine, we are switching gears. So we are now done with the bootstrap site, the uh, responsive bootstrap site, and we're moving on to WordPress. Um, so WordPress. WordPress is a CMS or a content management system. Um, basically what that means is that it's a, it's a system that you use uh, that's very top end, uh, very uh, uh, you work or top level. Uh, you work uh, more in a visual manner. There's not as much manual coding. Um, and you can put in your own content and you can organize the content using basically the software uh, that will handle most of it for you. Okay. Um, so if you think about it, when we first started out, we were writing just manual code into a text editor, right? And we just wrote HTML and CSS, bam. And then uh, the second thing we did is that we um, we used... Uh, uh, um, you know, bootstrap, uh, as a, as a backbone. Right. And then we, we didn't have to write all the classes and we use Dreamweaver as well. So we'd click on it and it would make a, uh, it would make the, um, the container and then it would make a, a div row and a column, you know, a number of columns. And then inside of there, you could tell it to put in pictures. It was, it was a little bit halfway in between. Now this thing, what it's going to be, it's, it's going to be more, you're not going to write code really so much. I mean, you, you can, uh, and you might even want to, but it's not going to be as necessary. It's going to handle most of it uh, on its own. Now, most of the websites, like if you go and you decide that you want to make your own site, you can go to like GoDaddy or Squarespace or Wix is really big. They're going to already have uh, their own CMS built for you. Uh, now, you can also upload your own for, for most of these and, you know, you just upload wherever you want. Um, so... CMS is basically just like, you know, you open it up and you just kind of click on things and you you make it look how you already have it. And they already have a pre-built template for you, uh, generally speaking. Um, now, that being said, the most common CMS there is, is WordPress. Uh, right now, it makes about 25% of the websites you see online. And honestly, I think it's probably higher than that. So most of the sites, most of the modern sites uh, that you're going to look at are going to be WordPress. Uh, so even though we've been learning HTML and CSS and I don't think we did really much JavaScript, but uh, even though we've been learning those items, um, in the end, most of the time, if you end up being a web, web designer and what have you, you're going to be working in WordPress. Um, it just makes the most sense, uh, because it's a little bit easier to control overall. It's just a, it's a, it's a cleaner system. Um, if you need to change something, you don't have to go in and change like code specifically and change it for every page and, um, this is more of an overarching controlling uh, thing to work with. Now, that being said, if you really want to like, you know, utilize it and what's going to separate you from, you know, just a, a pro user is your ability to code. Um, the fact that you do know HTML and those sorts of things um, are definitely going to benefit you um, in order to allow you to, uh, you know, adjust it. All right. So that's a CMS. Now, uh, some um, sometimes what you can do is you can find these templates uh, and this says nothing to do with the CMS. I'm just throwing it in there. Uh, basically, the idea is that actually if I open up Dreamweaver um, templates allow you to uh, they're basically just pre pre built wireframes that you can throw your own content into. OK, and Dreamweaver has them built into them. We didn't really use them at all. And you can also go online and you can download them. So people will like upload them. I don't really know where. Um, where you would download them. I don't suggest using them uh, for a bunch of reasons, but I'm going to show you some examples as soon as Dreamweaver loads up over here. Come on. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples of them. Uh, there we go. Let's bring you over here. Come on. There we go. Uh, so when you go to do a new site, you can do File, New. You'll see that they have these starter templates. And basically, like you see, they have this one and this one and this one. And they have these different you know, different ones here that you can, like, here's a nice little about page. You can create that. And then what's going to do is it already writes in all this stuff and just has placeholders for you. And then you would just replace, eh, you would just replace, you know, like the, the, the text and the images and so, and even tells you the size this is a thousand by 300. So you make sure you scale your images that size. Um, you would just replace it with your information. Um, and then, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And maybe adjust a little bit farther. But this is a template. Now, the reason why this isn't a good way to work 
Um, for one, it's generic, right? There's nothing to separate you from somebody else. You didn't really make it. You, if someone wanted something very specifically custom, uh, if all of you ever use their templates, then you can't really provide that to them. So um, it's not a it's not a good way of working. Um, they're also um, cookie cutter, which means that if you look at the like the names here, right? So this ID says author info, and um, you know it just says title. It's a link. These are kind of generic names, um, and the layout is generic. And what will happen is, is that the SEO, the search engine, will recognize that it's redundant and that it'll be similar to other ones, and it'll actually make yours less unique and not stick out as much, and you will, you know, lower your SEO. Um, so, uh, and it won't utilize, like if we just say banner image here for the banner, right? Well, as far as the SEO is concerned, that just means it's, it's a banner image. That doesn't mean anything. But if I say, you know, like, big hairy dogs and I sell big hairy dog products for my ID here that's going to say something that has a semantic meaning it's not just a banner image it's not physically what it is so um they're not I don't think they're necessarily the best way of working now what WordPress does have are themes themes are kind of like templates they're built sort of similarly but they're not as stringent it's not as hard like that was hard coded these are more kind of vaguely like have an overall look where it's like pre-built um it's like pre-built uh coloring and fonts and and some positioning and things like that okay so we're not going to be using templates inside of wordpress we're going to be using themes all right and a lot of these um like your wix and stuff they use a lot of templates um not themes and so they already have like these pre-built like really structural um we're not doing that as much now, one of the things you might run into when you are using WordPress is that sometimes people say WordPress.com and sometimes they say WordPress.org. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, WordPress is actually two different things. So WordPress.com is basically, it's a blog site. So if you go to, let's do that. Let's go to WordPress.com. Is that right? I don't know. Let's see. Come on. All right. That worked really good. Let's try that again. WordPress.com. There it goes. Just wanted me to type it twice. Basically, what it allows you to do um, is allows you to build um, a blog. Okay. Now you can do other things as well. So that they've they've built it out a little bit more. Um, but uh, so it, it's it's free, which is awesome. Um, but you get a subdomain, which means it won't be your like like if you look at well, if you look at my site right now, it says teachmecone.flywheelsites.com. That's because this is a subdomain of flywheel sites. I do have a domain. It's Teach Me Cone, but I'm kind of using that site with this one. So eventually, this will just be called teachmecone.com. That means I have my own domain name. But because it says teachmecone.flywheel sites, it means it's a subdomain. So I don't like have a, a whole domain. I'm just, I'm basically a folder inside of theirs. And that's what's happening here. So you'll have a folder inside of WordPress, but it won't be your own. You know, it won't be like, you know, your name dot com. Um, they have very uh, limited themes and plugins like they only have a very I don't know how many it is, but it's it's a very small select amount um, and you're you're stuck with them. Like whatever they give you, that's what you get to use and you can't do anything beyond that. OK, uh, you really only really see it used for blogs. It's uh, very simple to work with, but it's not very flexible, which means if you want to change something, you can't really do it. They don't they don't really give you the option to to really get into it and manipulate like the code and stuff you basically just have to work with whatever's there um now it does offer um the same stuff that you can do with the wordpress.org software um but you have to pay for it so it's i mean it is it's not a terrible idea but because word whenever you um, get something for free that means you are basically at their mercy of whatever their standards are whatever they're you know what you know you have to sign the dotted line to say i will follow whatever your whatever you tell me i have to do so if you want to you know make a site about how cats suck because they do uh they might be like well we like cats and they can be like you can't post that but if you do your own site on wordpress using wordpress and you you know get a dope um a server and the whole nine yards you can do that so one of my concerns is i don't know how stringent their their services are um, I don't know. I find it fishy. So anyway, uh, they do offer something like that. So you can look into that if you, you know, want to. Um, there's also uh, WordPress.org. Now this is the software that you use. So if you go to WordPress.org, 
wordpress.org. Okay, um, this is where you would like install the software um, and it tells you, you know, it has all these tools. Okay, now, so um, what you, uh, anyway, so the first thing you have to do is you have to host your own site, so you have to rent a server and that can be anywhere from, I don't know, like 150 bucks a year, somewhere around there. It kind of depends. Um, some places have a lot cheaper, some offer a lot bigger things, some offer smaller things. Um, stuff like that. So, uh, but you will have to pay for a server, which is just a computer that you upload your stuff on, uh, that's hosted somewhere, and they keep it on 24/7. Okay. Um, you have to usually purchase a custom domain name. Domain name. Now, um, that is usually thrown in when you first start buying it. A domain is like 10 bucks a year. It's not anything. Um, you have the ability to upload any theme or plugin that you want. Um, you can even write your own. So this site here, this is my own theme that I made. I just, I wrote it myself. Um, so you can do whatever you want. You have complete control over it. Um, you can use a bunch of different tools. Um, they have a, there's a lot more options, which makes it a lot more complicated, but you also have more control. Um, this is a lot quicker and easier. So if you're just looking to like get word out that aliens are real, then just do wordpress.org. But if you're trying to, you know, be professional and, what have you, then you want to do this. Um, so web designers and developers both utilize WordPress.org. They won't utilize this. Okay. So this is what we're using in case you're wondering. Now, that being said, how would you utilize such uh, software and what have you? So normally what you would do is you would go to a server. So you could go to, like I said, GoDaddy, Squarespace, HostGator, Bluehost, I had for a while, Wix, there's a bunch of them, you can look them up, um, and you would uh, buy, you know, look through them and, and compare them, but you would pay for the server space, and you usually have to pay for the whole year, and then that site itself usually has uh, an option that they will install WordPress onto their server for you, and then what you do is you log into their computer, their server, uh, with your stuff. So the software is actually not even installed on your local computer. It's installed on theirs and you log into it and change things that way. Okay. Um, now that being said, uh, you'd have to buy a server in the whole nine yards. And I know students are very poor. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called, um, cause, um, I didn't really get into it yet, but WordPress is a collection of a bunch of things. So, um, it, it needs a, a an, an online environment in order to, to work. Okay because <clears throat> it's meant to be an online, you know, uh, utility. So um, one piece of software that we're going to end up using, and you'll want to install this at home, is Local by Flywheel. So Flywheel is actually a web hosting service, just like um, Wix and uh, Squarespace and all those other ones. But they also offer this software that allows you to work locally. Um, and it's very easy. It's like a one click solution. And then if you're really happy with it, you can actually, and this is actually what I did. That's what my site's built on. Thus the uh, flywheel sites.com. Um, you can write it locally. You make your whole site. And then when you're happy with it, um, you know, using this software here, you can, you, it will transfer it to the server. If you decide that you want to pay for it, you don't have to pay anything up front. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this. So you, um, if you go there, and I, I show you how to do it. You're going to download it and then you're going to install it. Okay. But basically it's just free software. And what it is, um, it allows you to make a, um, see, it's meant to be installed by the, yeah. It allows you to basically make a sort of fake local environment, like online environment to play around with WordPress and build up a site, but it's not live. Like nobody can access it. It's only, it's only live on your personal computer. And that way you can work on it. You know, it's a little bit quicker because you're not having to go across the internet. Um, and you can test things out without it being like, you know, like if you're Nike, you don't want to like have a half finished site, like open to the public while you're working on it. It's going to look bad. So you would make the site locally. And then once you're happy with it, go ahead and make it live. This allows you to basically work locally uh, with it. Now there are other options, um, more popular options. Um, so there's another option um, that's called um, MAMP. Sometimes it's called LAMP. Sometimes it's called WAMP. Um, but basically what it is, it's, um, it's a, a way of it, it installs all these pieces of software for you, um, on, on its own. And it does the same thing that flywheel does, but it's, it's a little bit more complicated to, to get together. 
um, because in order for the website to work locally, um, WordPress, that is, uh, you have to install a bunch of things. So you have to install Apache, uh, MySQL, PHP, WordPress. Um, there's a bunch of different pieces of software. Fly This local by Flywheel will actually install it all at once um, for you. And you, all you have to do is just, you and you know, you, you fill in a couple of things and it, and it installs it. So that's why we're going to use that. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, and it will be easier to transfer online if you decide to, um, to utilize that. All right. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So, so there's MAMP, which is Mac app, blah, blah, blah. It's this, and there's LAMP, which is Linux app, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then there's WAMP, which is Windows, blah, 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 blah. I think MAMP now covers all of them. If you look it up, you can find it. All right. So the first thing you would need to do if you were making a site is to, uh, I'm going to wait on, we'll wait on that is to make a new folder. So we'll just do a new full. Okay. I thought I didn't new folder and we'll just call this like oops, test site all right so that's where i'm going to install my don't call yours test site and then you would click on create new site and then you need to give it a, a name and i'll say you know uh class zero or say you know spring 2019 um example site all right Something like that. Let's do advanced options. Okay. I want to click advanced options. This is going to be the name of it. So it's going to be dot local, not dot com or dot org. It's going to be dot local. And then this is where it's going to load to. So by default, it loads into this folder called um, local sites. And I would just change this. I'm just going to go right to the desktop. That's why I know where it is. And what I call it? I don't know, test site. Okay. So I'll select that folder. So now it's going to be a test site. And then I hit continue. Uh, preferred is probably fine and hit continue um, and then you give it a username and password so i'm just going to call it bcp and the password is going to be bcp that way it's easy uh, obviously you'd want this to be no it's not multi-site nope. uh, obviously you'd want this to be um custom but i'm would need the uh i would need the uh, password so for now just do that you hit add site and then this takes a really long time sometimes it's fast i've seen that fast in some computers it's going to ask you to go through this stuff. Now, you cannot um, install the site unless you have um, unless you have uh, administrative privileges. You can actually see it right here. So, like, if you when you go to install this on the school's computer, it will not allow you. It, it'll stop, and I have to type in a password for you because you don't have admin privileges. Uh, because it's it's you know it's 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 very much like in the system. Uh, so it's accessing a lot of things that you know it needs. So anyway, uh, so you need a local folder, you would do that. And everything that you make is inside of this folder. Okay, so when you make the site, that entire folder is your site. All right. Um, that's where the whole thing is. <coughs> um, and then I'm going to pause it until the site gets done. So I can show you the next parts. All right, so once the site is made, uh, when you're in local, it'll look like this. But I just want to show you something. If I go here, this is where I put the folder. And you can see inside of test site, I probably should have made the same name as the actual site. Uh, you'll see there's two folders. There's app, um, public, and then it has all of this stuff in here, right? And then there's logs, um, which really aren't quite as useful. Now, um, inside the app, blah, 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 as you add stuff in, it's going to go into this content section. To this uploads all right uh, there's nothing in there yet because uh bc april uh so anyway uh this is the actual site this whole folder and these two items everything that you upload all the things that you add the text that you add all that stuff is going to go inside of here so whenever you want to save your site you know you just execute like you would in wordpress and then this is what you want and when you go to submit the site or if you try to bring it home you want to right click send to and you want to do a compressed zip folder, okay? Or if you're on a Mac, you right click and you just click on compress. And it's going to go like this and it should pop up right here, hopefully, or right over there. There he goes. All right. And that's it right there. And later on, if you decide, and so this is what you would carry with you, you know, this or this. All right. When you go to use WordPress, if you want to import a site, so come on. Maybe I gotta do it this way. You import a site, you have to import the zipped version. 
So you would import the zip site. Okay. So anyway, uh, we made the site. So now what I'm going to do is show you kind of what it is. So if you click on the view site, what it's going to do is it's going to open up in the web browser, which opened up off, off hand here. Come on. Ah, there we go. There we go. Uh, it's going to open up uh, this test site, and this is kind of what it looks like. Not that great. Um, now, if you want to log into it, so right now you can see it says spring local, or, you know, it says the site name dot local, which is what we called it. If I want to actually open up in the, and like change it, you got to click on admin. And then again, it keeps pulling up over to the right. I'm going to wait till it's done. Uh, let me log out. It's already log, log out. All right. Come on. All right. Come on. Man, just won't let go. All right. Uh, and it's going to look like this. And then you just got to type in your password, VCP, and VCP, like that. And you see it's um, it's always going to be this, even if it's online. It'll be your site name, probably .com. And then it's WP login is where you want to go, okay? And then I'll just hit login. And notice that I'm all in the web browser here. And this is basically the dashboard. Now, um, let's do this. And we'll do this. And so the dashboard is basically where you control everything of the site. All right. Uh, that's this whole area here. Um, so it, when you start off here, it's going to give you kind of like where stuff's updated, things that have changed, you know, oh, they've, you know, they've re-released a new version of it or, you know, someone posted something on your things or left a comment and all that stuff or pages that have been changed and who changed them, uh, all that sort of business. Okay. Now, um, if you look on the set on the side here, you'll see one that's for posts. Basically, posts are like blog posts. That's the idea behind it. So um, you're not going to use this at all. But uh, some sites, you know, they use pretty heavy posts. Um, the next section is for media. So everything that you upload and you can upload right into here, meaning like pictures or video or audio or whatever, whatever your, your, your media is, uh, will be uploaded into that section. It's basically just a a library of whatever you've uploaded okay in this case you're not really uploading but virtually you are you're, you're going to be putting it into the content folder um you'll do it right in here but you'll actually do it in not in here but you can upload into here but you can just review it honestly i don't really use that um the next one's pages so these are the pages of your site just like you would expect um pages and posts are actually exactly the same they just have like a different tag attached to them um but the the way, the default layout of them is probably going to be different depending on the theme. So that's why they're separated. Okay. The next section here is the comments. So if anybody leaves any comments, you're not going to really use that either. Uh, the next one's appearance, which is basically what you would assume would be. It's how to control the appearance of your um, site. So um, if the theme has some custom things that you can add to it, uh, there's things called widgets, which are basically just pre-built little nuggets that can do certain things like you know this widget is a clock and this widget um lets you put you know custom text in and this widget uh puts in a calendar or things like that okay um and it lets you control your menus and uh the theme editor uh basically it'll allow you to change the theme is written in css just like we've been writing so if you need to change something about that css like if it's purple and you want it to be blue you can go in there and change the css directly using that um, theme editor uh then there's plugins plugins basically allow you to uh add functionality to your site so you might have a theme and it's really nice looking but you need to have like a shopping cart and you um you don't have a shopping cart so uh and that theme doesn't like have it built in most won't i don't know if any do um i haven't installed any they had but uh there might be a plugin that allows you to connect your site to paypal so people can purchase items from your thing or um a plugin that you know it's a calculator or a plugin that you know when you click on a, a picture it opens up bigger and it plays a movie there's all sorts of different plugins and you'll see later on but it basically will add like extra cool little dynamic things for the most part some of them are, uh and for the most part that people see some of them are actually things that just make it easier for you to work inside of here um like it just adds something in here to you know to make it easier uh like like one plugin i like to install is one to it keeps track of how many people have visited my site you know um users so a lot of times uh what will happen is you have um 
uh, you might have multiple people all working on the same site. So you'll give different people different permissions and all of the people that work on it, you know, have different passwords. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and they'll be allowed access. Another really common thing to do, probably the most common, is you'll have like administrator privileges. And then what you'll do is if you have a, a client, you'll also give them privileges, but they might be a little bit less. Um, that allows them to upload their content and things like that, but you can still control it as well. So you and the client will both be users. Um, tools. Um, basically, you can import and export. Uh, so if you need to export out the site, I have not had good luck with that. Um, there's other things where you can, imp well, see, that was still being plugins. Uh, but anyway, I don't really use any of that. Uh, the settings. So settings are just the default thing. So, um, whether you're Eastern time or specific time, uh, you know, e being English, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, and what's this last one? I think it's just making it, yeah, it just makes it collapse. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's the dashboard. Now, Next thing to think about are themes. Now there are a bunch of themes. So I'm gonna do is I'm just the best way to do that is just to show you. So I'm gonna go to appearance themes. Uh, might be a little bit slow. So right now it has this default 2019 theme, and you can see uh, that's the one we're currently on. All right, but I could choose I loaded also 2016 and 2017. But watch, I'm gonna go ahead and activate this one. It's going to take a second. All right. Now, uh, this is now my active scene. Now, watch when I go to my site now, which was spring. Uh, I don't want the, I'm just going to take the admin out. There we go. Now, when I go to my site, you'll see. Da, 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 da. Now, it looks like that. So, now that's the theme, okay? Now, it has these pre-built pictures, and you can remove those pictures and put your own pictures in there. Uh, but the layout is different, okay? So, depending on, um, depending on uh, you know, what you want, you would put stuff in there. Now, there are, like, thousands, tens of thousands of themes. Um, so, if you want to find a new theme, you can do is add a new theme. Okay, and you click on that. And then this is probably going to be the biggest decision you make as far as your site's concerned. So you should go through and just go right down the line and find one that works for you. So right here, this is featured. They have one that's popular, uh, you know, latest ones. It's going to take a little longer. So these are like newer ones. Um, I can go, you got favorited ones. I can also just search. So let's say I just look up something like portfolio. Let's say I'm trying to make a portfolio site. I'll search that. Look, it's coming up with 7,060, oh no, okay, uh, 838. And these are ones for portfolios, right? So let's say, I like this one, that's uh, a little 80s. Um, I don't know. This one's fun, we'll do this one. Okay, so let's say it's kind of like that one. Oh, is that different? That's one page RT portfolio. Well, we'll go with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it. So you hit install. That's going to take a little bit because basically it's downloading onto your thing and then it's going to have to activate it. Um, now, what I do want to show you, though, is this. <clears throat> so uh, you don't have to search through here because it's kind of slow and it's kind of clunky. What I suggest, and I just put this one on here, but like this one has 50 plus, 50 plus best free responsive WordPress themes. And basically it's just a bunch of, um, they're like this shapely, come on. Cool. It's not there. He goes. Shapely is nice, and you know, uh, whatever. There's a bunch of them, but you can just go on Google and type in like you know, great themes for portfolios or great themes to sell books or something. Um, you know, do some research, and then once you have the name, you can go into here. Uh, that's not it. Where are you at with a baseball bat? You can go into here, and you can um, you know, you could search for it and then install it. Okay, there are a bunch of themes that are for that are for sale that you can pay for, and um, they can be relatively cheap to relatively not. Uh, and some are used quite a bit. Like Divi is like one I hear a lot that people use. And depending on the theme and you know and how much it costs, probably the more robust. So these free ones are not going to be, you know, as robust. They're going to have probably less options. Uh, but for now, I would just do a free one until you know what you want to do. But, you know, if you're doing a, a business and you're planning on making money off your site, it's worth the investment to, you know, pay for a, a nice theme, you know. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of these and these ones are for free, but you can find ones that aren't. Uh, but basically, it's the default layout of what your site's going to be. And then so it's installed. And I'm just going to click on activate. 
but it'll activate it. Um, but yeah, so you would just search for those. And then once that's done, and I'm just going to wait for this. Come on. There we go. So now you're going to see it's one of your installed ones, and it's activated. And now if I go here and refresh, it's going to look like a disk. Yeah. All right. Now notice it doesn't look exactly like the other one because it doesn't have... See, like this one's got this nice extra little thing where it's got this pop-out thing. So different ones have different options. Like if this one has a search, some don't have search. Uh, it's also got this... Uh, little okay so it doesn't actually use a, um, a drop down menu it uses this so different ones have different options and you can you know look at them and you can install a couple and just test them out and see what they look like and then afterwards you know decide to change it um, but anyway so that's your theme that's kind of the the, the backbone of what your whole site is and what it's going to kind of look like all right so I highly suggest um, you know uh, working uh, on that uh, so then the next no, that's not it. I thought, I thought. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, our plugins. Plugins basically are like little extra programs that allow you to add extra things onto it. Um, some of the ones that we're going to install are going to be these guys. Um, these are actually just to build the site. It allows us to make it a little bit easier than having to, to manually write into them. Um, but that's what you're going to do there. Uh, yeah. So, um, again, if I'm inside of this and let's go in here, if I go to pages, these are going to be your pages just so you get an idea of how it works and you're going to make multiple pages. Uh, so right now a sample page, all I would do is, um, where is it? Add new, I'd add a new page I give it a title. All right. All right. All right. Um, okay, welcome to the wonderful books of blocks. Okay, so you add a title. Oh, this is weird. It's a little bit different. I probably should have read that. Um, I didn't really look at this one. So they might have different ways of basically adding. So I'd add a title and just call it like home page. Okay. And then I can write in here what I want. La, 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 like so. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, and this is my page and then I can publish it and publish and then I can actually view the page. And here you go. So it says home page, so on and so forth. All right. Um, but the plugins will allow us to add extra little things of ways to interacting with it and like, you know, all that other stuff. So, um, yeah, so we're gonna call that good. All right. So, uh, that's a br brief, uh, overview. What you're going to do is you can just follow these videos, this, uh, especially if you're at home to install it, this goes over how to install it, uh, it's on a PC, but it should be relatively similar for a Mac. Uh, to install it and to get started to make like a basic page. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do a quick video for this thing. It's only like a second long uh, and then we'll go from there.